Welcome to lesson two, values clarification and commitment. Another way of stating that is identifying doing what matters most in life. As we're gonna learn in this lesson, when we actually clarify our values and strive to live consistent with them, we are able to enhance our resilience. I wanna begin this lesson with two quotes that kind of put this lesson in context. The first quote is by Friedrich Nietzsche, and he said, the person who has a why to live can bear just about anything. The other quote is by Russ Harris, who is an Australian psychologist who is an expert in acceptance and commitment therapy, and he said this about commitment. Commitment isn't about being perfect, always following through, or never going astray. Commitment means that when you inevitably stumble or get off track, you pick yourself up, find your bearings, and carry on in the most meaningful direction possible. The quotes communicate to us that when we develop a sense of uh, purpose and meaning in life, we can overcome adversity, pick ourselves up after a setback, and continue to pursue what matters most in life. And those are the ingredients to becoming a resilient person. So we're going to let these quotes serve as kind of a compass for learning about values and ultimately learning how to live consistent with our personal values. Let's go ahead and define values in order to have a good understanding of what they are so we can ultimately figure out how to live consistent with them. Values are chosen life paths or directions. They help orient our behavior. Without values, behaviors, everyday actions, would be uh, seemingly meaningless and non-purposeful. But when we have values, they underlie our behaviors and give us reason and purpose to do the things we do on a day in, day out basis. Values are considered ongoing patterns of behaviors that occur over time. They're not a one-time event. They're not something that you achieve or cross off on a list. So for parents, it's easy to understand the concept of values. So let's imagine a parent of a relative newborn and they're engaging in the repeated process of changing poopy diapers. Now changing pooper diapers in just, if you look at the behavior, it can seem kind of annoying, frustrating. But if you actually look at that uh, from a deeper value-based sense, you see it as that you're being a caring, loving parent. And it's an opportunity to actually bond with your child. So when you have the deeper value to be a caring, loving, and nurturing parent, you start to see the daily tedious behaviors you engage in, like changing poopy diapers, as something more than that. So when you reflect on your day and you ask yourself the question, am I being the person who I want to be? You can say yes. So in essence, values are all about being the person you want to be, doing what matters most to you in life. It just so happens when people commit to living consistent with their values, that is being the person they want to be, they reflect on their lives as being more meaningful, purposeful, and ultimately more fulfilled. What happens with the impact of stress is it minimizes the impact. And we're able to see through kind of stressful situations and stay committed to doing that which matters most. There's a common misunderstanding when we talk about values. And most people confuse goals and values, but values are different than goals. They're related, but they're different. First of all, values represent a, a chosen life path, like I mentioned, or you can consider it kind of as a life compass. It points you in the direction you want to go. A goal is something that you actually achieve along the way as you're pointed in that direction. So we can think about a goal being, I'm going to earn a degree. I'm going to get my Bachelor of Arts. That's a goal that's achieved. Once you achieve it, it ends. Whereas a value that would underlie that goal is something more than that. It's like a, a love for learning. So you have a lifelong love for learning, which never stops. So with that love for learning, you may achieve a degree. You may pursue different professional development opportunities in your career. You may take extended uh, opportunity courses from university. So a value is something that never ceases, whereas a goal. We often think about goals can be crossed off. You can create a to-do list and you can cross them off. So for example, let me give you one uh, for those travel lovers. A value would be uh, a love for traveling and experiencing different cultures. A goal could be, I want to go to China. But once you've been to China, you've crossed it off. 
So your value for traveling and experiencing novel cultures never ceases, whereas you have particular goals within that that you achieve and those accomplishment of goals communicate to you that you've actually, you're on track. You're actually living life as you hope to. So goals are ultimately informed by our values. Many folks don't take the time to actually set goals and strive to attain those. That's because they haven't done the initial work, which is the values work. Clarifying who you want to be in the particular areas of your life and then developing goals that and taking steps in your life to achieve those goals. And when you accomplish those goals, they communicate back to you that you're living life to its fullest. Essentially, you're doing what matters most. So we've defined values. We've distinguished what, how goals are different than values. Uh, you might be asking yourself, like, what good are values? So I want to take a moment to talk about the importance of values. So first of all, values, when we've actually spent the time to define them and clarify them, they actually guide a variety of things. They guide your daily actions. Why do you get up and do what you do? Why do you get up and maybe exercise? What value would underlie that? Why do you eat the way you do? Why, uh, if you go into work and have an interaction with someone, why may you interact with them in a special type of way? By greeting them, asking how their weekend went. Values underlie our actions and they help prepare us for how we want to behave through the day. They also help us with our decisions because we're often put in kind of decisional dilemmas in life, whether it's a conflict, whether we have a choice to engage in one activity or the other, we're putting into dilemma to behave in a way that's consistent with our values. So they can help guide our decision making if we pause for a moment and reflect on what matters most to me in this moment. Who do I want to be and be known as in this, in this instance? I think more importantly, values help transform the interpretation of our daily behaviors. We do so much that feels annoying, frustrating, or just tedious on a daily basis. And when we don't look at the things we do in the context of our personal values, they can really feel that way and they can frustrate us, annoy us, and ultimately cause us to feel more stressed. So I'll give you a, an example how values can, can transform daily behaviors into something more meaningful. I'm married. My wife likes to keep a cleanly and orderly house. Less of a value to me. However, I have a really deep value about being a loving, thoughtful, and caring husband. So. One of my tasks is to make sure that the dishes are washed and put away and kept clean. If I didn't ground myself or connect to my values before doing that, I would see it as a stupid, annoying thing that's interfering with me doing other things that I want to do. However, if I take the moment to reflect on my personal values about being a loving, caring, and thoughtful husband, it actually transforms. I see doing the dishes as more than that. It's actually me being the husband I want to be. So that's the power of values. As parents, as employees or workers, we're put in constant situations where we can either act in accordance or consistent with our values or we can behave in a way that is inconsistent with our values. So we're going to learn in a little bit how stress and other factors actually eat away with our ability and we start to lose sight at our uh, values and we ultimately do things that run counter to them. And so when we reflect on how life's going, we actually reflect on a way that doesn't feel good and causes discomfort, or we can say just increases the likelihood of more stress. The challenge with being a human is that it's so darn easy to stray away from our values because so much happens. We multitask, we have all kinds of stressors, we have all kinds of things pulling us in one direction versus the other. So we're in constant, uh, I guess, tension to live consistent with our values. One of the biggest factors that eats away with our ability to live consistent with our values is stress. As we discussed in the previous lesson, stress can be pretty chronic and toxic to us in terms of our minds, bodies, and ultimately our behavior. When stress eats away at our minds, we start to lose sight of our values. 
We also don't engage in as good of decision making and we operate more on emotional uh, basis rather than things that are more effective in the moment. So when we think about what causes us to lose sight of our values or triggers us to live in a way that's inconsistent with our values, it's really all about stress. So part of being a, and living consistent with one's values is to clarify your values, be firmly aware of what they are, know which behaviors that enable you to live consistent with that value, and then staying committed to those despite experiencing stress, unwanted thoughts or experiences, because those are the things that will get us off our game and cause us to live inconsistent with our values. So to really understand how stress impacts our values and our ability to live consistent with them, I'm going to discuss a metaphor called the tug of war with Frankenstein metaphor that was developed by researchers in the field of acceptance and commitment therapy. And they really devise this metaphor to wrap people's minds around how pulling and fighting against stress isn't necessarily the answer. So uh, let's imagine that on one end of a rope is Frankenstein and Frankenstein represents stress. On the other end is yourself and you are uh, going to engage in a battle, if you will, over tug of war. In between you is a bottomless pit. So most people's natural reaction or inclination to this situation is to pull really hard and to fight and struggle. But the issue is you ultimately can't win this tug of war because it's against Frankenstein. And in life, you can't win against stress because as we discussed in the previous lesson, it's unavoidable and never goes away. It also happens to be that the more we fight and struggle, the worse we are later on. Because when we reflect on how we've behaved and the things and we've done and the choices we've made, we've actually done things that we later regret or we lived in a way that was inconsistent with our values. The answer to this scenario is to just let go of the rope. What happened if Frankenstein was only tug of war against himself? This is the point, is to accept stress as being a part of life, letting it be there and present with you, but staying focused on doing what matters most. And in this case, it would be to let go of the rope and continue to do what matters most to you. In life, we can't avoid stress. And this is why it's important to stay focused on what matters most and to stay committed to doing what matters most. So we later reflect on our decision making and our behaviors. And those things are in alignment with who we want to be. And those are our values.